Hello there, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. We're somewhat uh, two-year-old top-heavy uh, this week. We've got uh, four two-year-olds in total to have a look at, but uh, I make no apology for that. It's the time of year when we start to see some really good juveniles, and I think we've certainly got two that are going to make up into very decent performers in the verdict uh, this week and we've got one in the first race that I'm going to look at on Thursday at Sandown Park. It was a seven furlong maiden, a rest went off the five to four favourite seemingly very well fancied, five to two golden speech, manifested six to one, Nostrum 13 to two, Bateman's Bay 10s and it was 18 to one and bigger the rest and it was Nostrum who impressed in victory here from stall seven under Ryan Moore for Sir Michael Stout. Golden speech for Godolphin from stall five, finished in second place. And third home was a rest from stall six. Miles better than the bare result. Bear that in mind as we have a look at this race. And Manifested, who was nibbled out in the market, finished in fourth place. Let's see how this race unfolded. And Ryan Moore was aggressive from the gates on this newcomer Nostrum. Keep an eye on him here. He doesn't leave this horse alone in the early stage of the race. He gets after him early on to try and get a nice prominent position, suggesting they expected quite a lot from him and they were determined to get the best out of him on debut. Look at Ryan rowing away there. That's not his normal style. And now he's got a, a pretty good position. Compare it to the favorite, Arrest, who's in here. Much more passive from the gates, Frankie, on Arrest. Just letting him gradually find his feet, whereas Ryan here on Nostrum was aggressive and adopted a nice handy position. Now Ryan wasn't to know what the pace was going to be like here, but as it was, he's adopted the best position because it was pretty steady. I would go so far to say this was a steadily run maiden with a relatively fast finish, as evidenced by the finishing speed percentage of 104.56, so Nostrum Finished the final three furlongs 4.56% quicker than he ran the rest of the race. And that steady gallop was set by William Buick on Golden Speech in the Godolphin Blue, a horse who had had previous experience, but he looked a little bit wayward under pressure and he was soon put away by the winner who quickened smartly. Ryan Moore's after him now, but he quickens up really well. A final three furlongs of 36.89, so Roughly even 12s through the final three furlongs for this horse who's still green. He's a big, strong individual by Kingman. He's got plenty of speed and he flashed it there to get past Golden Speech. On the outside, here comes a rest. Positionally, the way this race was run, the steady gallop put him at a disadvantage. And he comes home very strongly here. In fact, his final three furlongs were quicker than the winner. 36.73 for a rest, and it was 37.89 for the winner. So a rest has done a lot of running through the final three furlongs, but from a poor position, and he is definitely a horse to keep an eye on going forward. He comes out of this race with a ton of credit. Now we know that this was a steady gallop because of the finishing speed percentage, and we can compare it with a two-year-old Dancing the Grass, who we'll have a look at in detail later on in the program, because Dancing the Grass's final time in the Star Stakes was 1.6 seconds quicker than Nostrum in a more evenly run affair. But Nostrum could do no more than he did. Ridden quite aggressively by Ryan Moore, he quickened up well, he put the race to bed very quickly, and has a top-class pedigree by Kingman out of the very useful Mirror Lake, and there is certain to be a load more to come from Nostrum going forward. Ryan Moore was certainly pretty bullish about him when interviewed after this. So lots to come from Nostrum. He's a really nice horse. So Michael Stout, as some people were saying on social media, has got another one, their reference being to Desert Crown, of course. But Arrest rates as being a very bright prospect. And he's by Frankel. He probably is more of a stayer than Nostrum. Nostrum's got Kingman speed. Whereas a rest probably is a bit more of a stayer and he was too far back the way this race went. And he is going to be a really good horse along with Nostrum in the future. And I would not underestimate a rest going forward. And that he was so strong in the market, he must have been showing plenty at home. So two really nice horses. This fella Nostrum, he's very good indeed. He's got a sharp turn of foot 
and pattern company awaits. But the same can be said of Arrest, who will be a stronger stayer and who was at a considerable disadvantage in that race at Sandown. When we were looking at the Nostrum race at Sandown on Thursday, I alluded to, to this contest, the one that was won by Dancing the Grass, the 11 to 4 favourite. This was the Star Stakes listed race for Phillies. Fairy Cross was 3 to 1, 11 to 2 tagline, and Bet Me was 13 to 2. And Dancing the Grass was quite impressive in landing this in a much quicker time than Nostrum posted over the same trip, 1.6 seconds quicker uh, to be precise. Dancing the Grass, stall 6, white cap. Fairy Cross from three, the Godolphin blue, and Lady Alara from nine was back in third place. This is how it unfolded. And the first thing to say is that this was evenly run. This is a pretty good gallop overall here. And the winner is a strong stayer at this trip. She'd have no problem getting a mile whatsoever. Here she is just in behind at this stage, the white cap, but she's got plenty of cover. She looked to be a bit keen for a stride or two. But now she's settled all right, talking about Keane, keep an eye on Fairy Cross, who does too much. She'd won at Newmarket prior to this, but she is a bit keen. Look at the jockey's hands up over, above the horse's withers. This horse is taking a keen grip, and she pays for that later on and doesn't see the trip out as well as the winner. I think D'Souza does well here on the winner because he doesn't want to angle out until he's turned into the home straight. So he tries to save as much ground as he can as close to the inside as he can get. He's just one horse deep, and then he angles out to get a run. Now, when we spoke about Nostrum, the finishing speed percentage was 104.56. This is much closer to 100, 100.64. So that tells us that this is a very evenly run race, and the winner has come home evenly, rated nicely by Sylvester D'Souza. But what we can see if we really boil the numbers down, the course track sectionals, is that she did pick up well. Her fifth furlong was 11.71 seconds, and her final three furlongs, 37.78. Now, Nostrum was a bit quicker through his final three furlongs, 36.89, but that's because he got to save more petrol early on than Dance in the Grass managed to do. Now, watch her here. She puts Fairy Cross away, and then she is pretty strong at the line, going away now. Fairy Cross getting tied, long way back to Lady Alara, and that is now two from two for Dance in the Grass, who is destined for much better things. She's entered in the seven furlong Moy Glare at the Curra in September. I put it to you that the Phillies mile might be the race for her. I think she's already looking for a one mile, the way she hit the line here. And she's got good form. As I said, I'm beaten in two starts. Her other win did come here at Sandown as well, where she beat one nation and One Nation has won a couple of races since then. So all in all, she's got good collateral form and she's also good against the clock. A sharp turn of foot as evidenced by that 11.71 second furlong coming from off the pace at a track where it's best to be prominent and very strong through the line. It's a very likeable effort from this filly. She's big and tall and scopy and there could be a fair bit more uh, to come from her. In behind, well, not sure what they'll do with Fairy Cross. She just was doing too much out in front early on and doing too much off an even gallop and therefore nothing left in the closing stages and she didn't quite see out the trip. She's run well and she's clearly quite useful. She bolted up at Newmarket on her debut uh, and I'm sure there'll be more opportunities for her. But you've got to like the winner. The Phillies mile might well be where she ends up towards the end of the season. Look at the size of her, look at the scope. There's certainly more to come. Well, we've seen two really nice two-year-olds so far in the verdict, uh, in Nostrum and Dancing in the Grass. We're going to see another one now, who wins on debut at Newmarket uh, on Saturday. This was some performance, I think. Seven furlongs the trip. The parent, who'd had a previous run, a real promising one at Sandown, was six to four favourite. Bold act for Charlie Appleby, five to two. But he also trained high bank, who was four to one and ridden by Jack Mitchell. Note the money for Dartman. He's an eye catcher in this race, 11s from 16s. But this race is about one horse. It's about high bank coming from stall number five under Jack Mitchell. Second home was Bold Act, who is right next door in stall six. So one, two for Charlie Appleby and Godolphin. And the parent with the benefit of experience was back in third place. But it's all about this winner who displays 
a tremendous turn of foot on debut despite being quite green throughout proceedings. Now the gallop is quite pedestrian early on and it did turn into a bit of a three furlong sprint so you have to be just a little bit wary of that. The finishing speed percentage tells us all we need to know. If you remember back to Nostrum that was 104 and bits, well this is 108.24 so they really have gone steady and then sprinted home. But the horse that sprinted best is High Bank and he has sprinted to some effect when we look down at the course track sectionals. Here he is tucked away under Jack Mitchell and Jack there in the, is always taking a pull on this horse constantly taking a pull and eventually when he gets out the turn of foot that he shows is quite devastating let's take you through the final three furlongs furlong five 11.39 furlong six 10.93 and furlong seven 11.62 and just at this point he's bottled up with nowhere to go he's right in here and Jack takes a pull on him. They're beginning to sprint and he can afford to take a pull because he's got nowhere to go. And now he gets him out and says go. And this horse says, okay, I'm off. He fires that 10.93 second furlong, followed by an 11.62. In 11.39 prior to that, when he was still on the bridle and away he surges to win with tons in hand here. Second horse was better fancied in the market than him. Bold act but he can't get any closer than four or five lengths. What a performance that was, and he took a while to pull up at this fella. But not just visually impressive, he has done a 10.93 second furlong for his penultimate furlong on debut, having been stopped in his run a little bit whilst being green. Wow, that is very impressive indeed. And he is destined for Patton Company now. Charlie Apple will be mentioning the Solario stakes at Sandown. That could be where he goes next, but the turn of foot he shows was frightening here. Absolutely frightening for a two-year-old. He's by Kingman. They always possess a lot of speed, the Kingmans, and he has flashed it here in no uncertain terms. There is one really good eye-catcher. It's Dartman. He's better than the bare result. Here he is. He was to the fourth throughout. And why is he better? Well, his last three furlongs were the second best in the race. He got nowhere near running as fast as the winner but he was second best in the race and the penultimate furlong from Dartman was an 11.14 10.93 from the winner but 11.14 from Dartman a good effort and there'll be more to come from him but this horse 33 to 1 for the guineas if you wanted to have a, a small wager at that sort of price there is no way I would put you off the only caveat I have with him is that that was a steadily run affair that turned into a three furlong sprint. How will he get on when he faces a strongly run race? Will that turn of foot be as devastating? I think it will be, because remember, he did this on debut while still being green. There's tons more to come from High Bank. I think he's one of the best two-year-olds we've seen this season. Let's move away from the two-year-olds now for a moment or two and have a look at one of the best time performances of the week. And it came from Francesco Clemente at Newmarket over a mile and a quarter, trained by John Thady Gosden, two to seven. Francesco Clemente went off, Milamici 13 to two, eight to one, Love is Golden, Menai Bridge 12s. You may ask, well, why put that whole, this horse in the verdict? A two to seven shot. Well, I put it in because of how fast Francesco Clemente ran and what the course track sectionals and final time tell us and they tell us that this is a very good horse indeed. Stall two is where the winner came from. Milamichi came from stall number one and third home was Menai Bridge from stall four. I'll send them on their way and just go to the final time first of all. Now the benchmark for a mile and a quarter race, a top class mile and a quarter race is two minutes. Really good horses can carve out 10, 12 second furlongs on the bounce. That's what top class horses should be able to do, resulting in two minutes for 10 furlongs. Well, this was two minutes, 3.84, a really good time. Not too far outside that two minute marker and done easily as well. Done in hand, winning by nine lengths off a mark of 99. A horse who is surely 110 plus 
all day long. This was a race that was run at a pretty good tempo. It wasn't um, that quick early on. They recorded a finishing speed percentage of 104.96. I would suggest it was an even tempo and Francesco Clementi was able to produce a stunning turn of foot from the back of the field uh, to take this and was so much better than the rest. It was almost embarrassing. Now one figure I want to highlight is where Francesco Clementi quickened. It was the eighth furlong, the eighth of ten furlongs and Francesco Clementi recorded an 11.07 second furlong coming up about now, looming up on the outside and about to fire an almost 11 second dead furlong. And now when asked to go, this son of Dubawi quickens in fine style to go away from Miramichi and Menai Bridge. Miramichi the horse, the grey horse with the red cap. But now Francesco goes and surges clear of the field to produce that really fast overall time. A fast furlong absolutely murdered them from three to two and then he just had to be kept up to his work to hit the line eased down. I'm sure you can see from that visually that he could have probably run a little bit quicker than that and got nearer that magic two minute mark. That really was a very good performance on the clock and the sectionals back up what you saw with your eyes. Visually impressive, but also impressive on the clock. And when those two things meet, then you know you've got something decent. He's by Jabari, as I mentioned, out of a Galileo mare. You look into the family quite closely. He's a close relative of Islington, the very useful Islington who was trained by uh, Sir Michael Stout. And the world really is his oyster. He produced a very good triple digit time figure this race. One of the best time performances of the week. And the great voltager might be where he goes next, stepping up in trip. A mile and a half should be within reach as far as his pedigree is concerned. He's in the ledger as well. Not sure about a mile and three quarters because he's, he's got plenty of speed. That 11.07 second furlong tells us how much speed he's got. So not sure about a mile and three quarters in sort of autumn ground. Mile and a half might be within, within reach, but I'll tell you what, he's almost top class at a mile and a quarter, judged by what he did on the clock here. Very good racehorse indeed, lightly raced, and there's quite a lot more to come from him. Francesco Clementi. I was uh, very keen on what Highbank did on the clock, sprinting for three furlongs in the previous race that we looked at. This race, all of it, all 10 furlongs were impressive from Francesco Clementi. A fantastic final time, a bright turn of foot and a more than bright future. From one strongly run 10 furlong race, producing a very good time performance, to a steadily run 10 furlong contest that didn't produce a very good time performance. Mile and a quarter at York on Saturday. The Sky Bet York Stakes, Dubai Honor 5 to 4, 5 to 2, Claymore, Dubai Future 9 to 2. The winner, Sir Busker, 15 to 2. I say not a good time performance, therefore, why is it in the verdict? Well, I think Sir Busker's done well to win, and I think it's a very interesting race. Sir Busker, stall one. Stepping up in trip, would you believe it? He's been around for a long time, but this was his first ever go at 10 furlongs. Dubai Honor, watch your Dubai's here. Second from stall two, and Dubai Future from stall three. We'll send them on their way and take you through uh, the figures. Sabaska, as ever, held up. I've always had him down as a horse who likes Ascot, likes to come off a strong pace at a mile, a straight mile. Um, but here, up to a mile and a quarter, I think he's done well to win because this was a steady, steady gallop. They crawled early on and the final time, we were talking about two minutes for top class mile and a quarter time as far as Francesco Clementi was concerned. And Francesco Clementi just under two minutes four. This was two minutes 11.88 for mile and a quarter, nearly 2.12, wow. Very, very slow indeed, courtesy of a steady early gallop we know it was slow because of the course track finishing speed percentage. 109.96 is what was recorded. So the winners come home 9.96% quicker in the final three furlongs than he ran the rest of the race. And given it was steadily run, common wisdom without figures, 
would tell us that he's poorly placed. And that, I think, is absolutely spot on. He's definitely in not a good position. Why is he in that position? Because he's trying to mile a quarter for the very first time in his career. And I think the wisdom was to hold him up and give him a chance of getting the trip. But what happened was this race turned into a test of speed. And given that he's a miler, actually, it really worked out well for him because he had more speed than these confirmed 10 furlong horses in front of him. Dubai Honor and Dubai Future together right in front of him, second and third in this race. They are mile and a quarter horses. They're both better than the bare result. The slow pace not suiting them, and they also, well, threw their chances away a little bit. You'd have to say that Dubai Future was a bit unlucky. He's hampered on the rail. You'll see that in a moment or two. And Dubai Honor wandered under pressure as well. But now the taps are turned on, they begin to sprint, and the final three furlongs were quick. Not what you'd expect for a 10 furlong race. 10.68, 10.67, wow, and then 11.38. That's from Sabuska as he quickens up towards the outside. Stop it there, and that's where Adam Kirby sits up on Dubai Future. He's not in the drive position because he's about to get hampered. And that did this horse no favours whatsoever. Now he can sort of get going again. But by now, Sabuska is rolling towards the outside and uses his speed, his miling speed, to put away Dubai Honour, who's run well but wandered under pressure. And he just gets there, right on the outside. It was a bit messy. Horses wandering around, horses getting hampered. And Sabuska, coming from off the pace, has just prevailed. Now, an interesting byplay on this race is that he's now won at 10 furlongs. But I'm not sure this confirms his, uh, him as a 10 furlong performer because of the nature of how the race was run. It was run very steadily and turned into a sprint. Those three furlongs I highlighted, 10.68, 10.67, 11.38, were horses sprinting through the final three furlongs off a very steady early gallop. If Sabuska hit a strongly run 10 furlongs, would he actually get it? That question has not been answered here. It was mentioned afterwards that they might have a crack at the Judmon International with this fellow, William Knight there, his trainer. He's um, in very good form, William. I think he mentioned he might come back and saying, I think that he's not um, worried about taking on Baid. He's gonna possibly come back and, and have a crack, have another go at uh, Baid, and full marks for trying something new, trying a different trip with Sir Busker. And it paid off at York on Saturday, but it uh, paid off probably because of the run of the race. The other take on it though, is that he did pretty well from off the pace in what was a very steadily run contest. Sir Busker back in the winner's enclosure the first time in a good while. Going to wind the clock back to Wednesday now and take you to Nace for another really good two-year-old performance. We've already seen uh, some very good ones here on the verdict this week, and there's another one coming here from Apricot Twist, who is the 11-8 to favourite for this maiden over just shy of six furlongs. Pauliak 9-4, to four. it was 9-2, to two. Rochester Mike. Magnanimous Mamus was 10-1 to one. and Grace Darling was 12s, it was 16-1. to one. And bigger the rest, Apricot Twist from stall number three who prevails here um, and really thrashes the rest. Mount Ruafu from stall one was in second place and third home was Magnanimous Mamus who came from stall number four. Now, this is a race that Joe Lyons won last year and the horse that uh, he won this with didn't go on to be particularly good, won a claimer uh, um, at some point through the season. But I think this horse is much better than that and I think will prove to be a pattern race performer. There is the winner towards the far side who completely and utterly dominates this race. Now, it might not be a very good race, but the figures tell us this is a really good horse. And if you look at the final three furlongs on the course track sectionals available on the Racing TV website, last three furlongs were 34.46. This horse was really motoring through the last three furlongs and doing so whilst I think being a bit green Pricking ears in the closing stages, not perhaps doing as uh, going as fast as it could go. So therefore, this is really impressive. 
The fourth furlong was 10.9 seconds from this newcomer. The fifth furlong was 11.09. This furlong now, the f wow, that is really good from Apricot Twist who is making a debut here on this particular occasion. This horse has got a nice pedigree. It's from the family of the Flying Childers winner, Guta Fan, and he's entered in the Ballyhane Stakes at Nace on the 1st of August. But perhaps the Flying Childers will be the place to go. Keep it in the family, I say, and have a go at that with this horse who is very fast indeed. This race was run at a decent gallop. It wasn't breakneck, but it's just the turn of foot the apricot twist shows. Just watch this horse's ears at various points through this contest in the closing stage. Look there, having a look around, not doing a tap, but not doing a tap while going 10.9 and 11.09. That's impressive from apricot twist. And just pushed out, look, hands and heels, watch those ears going backwards and forwards. There they go. Having a look at that pole there, which says 200 yards to go. Looking around, not doing an awful lot. Jockey not being hard on apricot twist in the closing stages, yet the winning margin ultimately is seven lengths and very impressive. And that close up angle I just show, the ears going backwards and forwards, having a look around, saying, well, I've run fast, but I'll tell you what, I can probably go faster than that. And if that is the case, this is a horse who on debut is now verging on listed company. And I, I don't speak lightly when I say that maybe the Flying Childers will be uh, on the agenda for this Jair Lyons trained horse. Jair looked very happy afterwards, and quite rightly so, because he's got a very nice two-year-old on his hands there. Remember the name, Apricot Twist. Well, that's it for the verdict this week. We were two-year-old uh, heavy, but we saw some good ones. Apricot Twist there is going to be a really good sprinter, I think, going forward. High bank, very impressive in winning at Newmarket and showing a bright turn of foot. Really impressive through the final three furlongs, the Solario Stakes. Might be next for the Charlie Appleby trained Colt and Francesco Clemente. Really impressive at Newmarket for Team Gosden. Uh, that horse putting up a, a sensational final time over a mile and a quarter and maybe now heading uh, to the Voltager, but certainly heading, I think, to Group 1 races after that performance on Saturday afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the verdict uh, this week. Lots more to come next time around, but for now, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.